This episode is called God of Compassion. In this episode, the teacher and students are about to go on a field trip through the transport chamber. Okay, there's the second bell. Welcome to class, everybody. Greetings, Instructor Android. Uh, hi, Teach. <laughs> As usual, the Chunker is in his cheerful Monday morning mood. Come on, Chunker, wipe that ugly look off your face. You look like a refugee from a horror movie. Yeah, I don't like school. I enjoyed that three-day weekend, but it got over with too soon. Chunker, with that kind of an attitude, you will not get very far in life. I don't know about anybody else, but I enjoy Mondays and going to school and my part-time job. I like weekends, too, but I like it all. Me, too! Before I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, I couldn't wait every day to get out of class so I could go home to make an explosion. Are you sure you still don't have some bats in your belfry? Well, that's just the point I was about to make. I don't like making explosions no more. The Lord's given me much better desires. I lit some firecrackers last 4th of July, but I didn't get the kick from it like I used to. In fact, it was almost boring. Well, that's because of the change that the Holy Spirit has created in your heart. That change is still going on, by the way. Uh, I don't want to interrupt. Oh, sorry, teacher. Okay. Today we're going on a field trip, first thing. I want you all to uh, go ahead and go over to the supply cabinet and get out your rock picks, collection bags, and various other things for uh, rock hunting. We're going to go on a field trip in the uh, Safford area to look for strawberry agate nodules. I hope they're good to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I like mine on shortcake. Come on, you guys. Stop acting so dingy. These nodules are called strawberry agate nodules because the banding within them alternates deep strawberry red with pink. It's a very unusual color combination in agate, and the quality is very high, and this bed of agate has only just recently been discovered. Okay, everybody go ahead and get your equipment and uh, head for the transport chamber. Oh, boy. Oh, hi, Jim. Oh, I like going on these field trips. Yeah, but I don't like going through that transport chamber. Feels weird. Oh, despite that, how you doing, brother? Oh, it hasn't been all that easy. I still get attacked sometimes, and sometimes it really feels like I'm, I'm lost. But my walk with the Lord, I'm going to cling to him forever. And he's been answering prayer, brother. Well, are you surprised? Uh, uh, kind of. Okay, are you all ready for transporting? I'm as ready as I know how to be. Well, let's get on with it. I'm... <laughs> What's wrong, Fob? He doesn't like being transported either. <laughs> okay. Activate transporter. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Teach you. <laughs> Ow! their destination in the mountains near Safford, Arizona. let us go. What happened, teacher? I felt like I was being stretched in every shape but sideways. Ugh. Be thankful that we're still alive. Before I go any further, I got something to do. Oh, no! 
double decker ray again. I didn't give it to him again. That's the first time I've given it to him. But he had it coming. He endangered all of our lives. So he sneezed in the transport beam, didn't he? Yes. And if our scientists had not built on the transport beam recovery module under the normal transport circuits, we would all be dead right now. Yes, teacher, all except you. You cannot be dead because you are not alive to begin with. Cork it, Skarzik. At least we're all here in one piece. For a second there, I thought we were going to lose it. What was happening to us, teacher? When Kodo sneezed into the transport beam, he blew us all over this county. When we're being transported, our molecular structure's converted to energy, and when he sneezed, it threw that energy all over the place. The recovery module simply tries to grab all of those ions and energy back together again. In this case, it worked. <sighs> okay, I guess we're all all right. Okay. Wait a minute, where's the chunker? Yeah, where is the chunker? Has anybody seen him? I didn't see him since we entered the transport chamber. Did anybody see him enter the transport chamber? I did. He did, teacher. He transported with us, but he's not with us now. I saw something terrible. He disappeared when we were going through that weird stuff. I saw him go away. He didn't come back. Oh, no! What does that mean, teacher? That means he's probably gone forever. The Chunker's gone? He's dead? It's very likely, unless he rematerialized at the transport chamber back in the classroom. Man, there's a small chance he could have materialized in the small recovery platform back at the uh, main office. I'll have to call headquarters immediately. Well, what should we do, teacher? Well, you can just sit here and hang tight. Well, there's headquarters now contacting me. Yes, this is Instructor Android 5. This is main headquarters to Android number 5. Do you read me? I read you loud and clear, headquarters. We had one of your students materialize in our auxiliary recovery transport pad. Have you had a transport failure? That's affirmative, headquarters. One of our uh, students had an accident. He sneezed in the transport chamber, totally disrupting the beam. Are all of your students accounted for? Yes, sir. All except for one. Everybody else made it through all right. Are you missing the student Todd Chunkowski? That's affirmative, headquarters. That's the one who's missing. That verifies with the student that materialized here. He is unconscious and is being rushed to the oh, infirmary. Wow. I will keep you informed. Front desk out. Out here. Oh, good. Wow, at least he's alive. Oh, thank you, Lord. I thought he was destroyed. I did, too. Boy, what are you two carrying on like that for? You act like he's your best friend. I don't want him to go off into eternity unprepared to meet God, that's why. Oh, brother. As bad as that character is, I'm surprised God didn't strike him dead many times so far. Yeah, with all the stuff that he pulls. Well, it's because God's a compassionate God. The same reason he hasn't stricken you dead. <laughs> I gotta give you a fat lip for comparing me with a chunker. Come on, Fob. Without God's mercy, we've all had it. It's his tender mercy and compassion that draws people to himself through Jesus Christ. His mercy and compassion com extends to every area of his universe and his word. I don't believe that. I don't believe a compassionate God can send somebody to hell. Well, Fob, let's take you, for instance. You've got your own life and your own way, away from God, defying him by just deciding you're just going to do your own thing no matter what he thinks. I mean, what do you expect when you die? You surely aren't going to go to heaven. You have no heart for God. And that's what heaven's all about. The beauty and the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, even if a sinner, a non-believer, could go to heaven, he'd be miserable there. It'd be like a, a Nazi being at home in a Jewish synagogue. And yet, Jim Yazi and, and me and other brothers in the Lord and sisters who've been following the Lord Jesus Christ and trusting him through thick and through thin can attest to his faithfulness and his tender mercies and his many, many answers to prayer and his loving kindness over and over and over again in every situation, thick and thin. 
And even the non-believers get blessed by the Lord. They enjoy wonderful times of earthly joy and, um, and gladness. He fills their hearts with good things, abundance, happiness at times, the wonderful warmth of marriage relationships, raising children, and many other blessings that we all just take for granted. Now, it's true that many men misuse those things, but that's not God's fault. But one of the greatest things that he gives to the non-believers is time. Time to repent, time to turn from their sin, and to be reconciled to him through Jesus Christ. That's a very interesting point, Joe. However, we are out here for a distinct purpose. Yes, teacher. Okay, I can see that some of you have already found some of them. We are looking for strawberry agate nodules. Let's see. Yeah, here's one right here. As you notice, they have a peculiar, almost a kind of a clamshell shape. And their looks on the outside are kind of deceiving. You'd never be able to tell from the outside what's on the inside. Ah, uh, here's one right here that's broken. But the ones that are broken, you can see the beautiful banding that's inside. I'm not much of a rock nut, but these things are kind of pretty. I found one right over here. Yeah, me too. The mine didn't have any color. It's just full of crystals. Yeah, every now and then you come upon a dud. Okay, I'd like you all to find about a pound of them, if at all possible. And later on, when we get back to the classroom, we'll go ahead and cut and polish some of them. Uh, teacher, what about the chunker? Well, we won't know anything until we get a call from headquarters. He's probably going through transport malfunction shock, which can be extremely serious. At any rate, you all go ahead and get to a rock hunting. Be careful, there are rattlesnakes and scorpions in this area. Uh, just a little bit later during the rock hunting. <laughs> Boy, these are sure beautiful rocks. Man, the unbroken ones look like little eggs or something. Hey, Jim, how have you been doing lately, anyway? Huh. Oh, I've been doing pretty good. And look, I said earlier, I'm still being hit by attacks and oppressions that tell me I'm lost and cast off from the Lord. And yet the Lord answers my prayers and refreshes me when I draw near him in secret prayer. <laughs> Isn't that something? Devil tells you you're lost and yet you draw near to God and he's right there. You just keep drawing near to the Lord and he'll restore you and strengthen you in your walk and in your faith in him. Hey, Joe, uh, these agate nodules, did God make these too? They sure are beautiful. <laughs> well, of course, Fob. That's just another evidence, an example, a physical, tangible evidence of God's goodness and kindness by sprinkling across this earth deposits of all kinds of different beautiful gemstones and rocks to be found by whoever finds them. Now, God didn't have to do that. He could have made the whole earth out of one boring kind of gray rock. Boy, people sure do fight over gold and things like that, though. Hey, Lukey, that's not God's fault. If God gives good gifts and people fight over them, that's not his fault. That just shows the wickedness of man. I mean, God in his sovereignty could have chosen just to totally ignore this earth and let man go on in his perishing, wretched state. But his great compassion was so great that he even sent his only son as a sacrifice for the sins of mankind. And the fact is, the Bible says that most will not accept that sacrifice and most will not be saved. But the few that do, even for their sake, God was willing to send his own son to die, Jesus Christ. I hear so many people complain and gripe about how in the Old Testament God would wipe out whole civilization and how he seemed to be so hard and everything. But even those things were an act of his love. I mean, those civilizations, the ones he ordered to be destroyed or destroyed himself, were some of the most wicked and corrupt and depraved civilizations on the face of the earth. I mean, some of them would even burn their own children in the fire to their demon gods. By wiping out such civilizations, God was doing the same thing that any surgeon does when he removes a cancer from a healthy body. But even without all of that, even if it seems to make no sense, everything that God does is good. It has love behind it as a motivator. He's righteous and just in all that he does, even if we can't understand it. Even if it seems harsh or even unfair, we need to put our little peanut brain on the altar and slay it and let him be God. And not to quarrel and quibble about how unfair this was or harsh that was. When you can sit on the throne of God and actually run the universe, then maybe you'll have something to say to him.
something to say about the way he runs the universe. Well, Joe, how long will God show love to me before it's too late? Father, that's a terrible question to ask. The fact is, you are not promised another breath. To the non-saved, God shows his mercy by giving them time to turn from their wickedness and sin and, and repent and, and be born again and have Jesus come into their heart. God shows his mercy towards the saved and the believing, the few who decide to do that, by keeping them and providing their needs and bringing joy into their hearts and refreshing times from the Lord, strengthening them in hard times, giving them joy unspeakable and full of glory, that which the natural mind cannot understand. The non-believer cannot understand it until he has actually crossed the line and been saved and had the Holy Spirit change his heart. If you are on the outside looking in, you just cannot understand it with your mind. But the fact is, every single unbeliever is in eternal danger every minute of the day. Yes, God is a merciful God, but if he's going to be a just and rightful king, he must punish disobedience and sin. And he has chosen to attach the most severe penalty possible to sin. Yeah, I know what that is. You've already told me about it many times before. It doesn't do any good just to listen to it. You've got to do something about it, Fob. The scripture says it is not his will for anyone to perish, but that all would come to repentance. But he's not going to force you to do anything. And he is kind and compassionate, slow to anger. But if you play with his kindness and his grace and think light of his riches of mercy, there's going to come a time when his wrath will catch up with you. And God doesn't do anything halfway. To his objects of mercy, those who are trusting in him, he lavishes on them his love and, and joy to the uttermost. But his wrath, when it is exercised, is also to the uttermost. That is more terrible than anybody can imagine. Like I said, God does nothing halfway. If you are blessed of him, man, you are blessed. But those who are cursed by him, oh, wow. Are you trying to put a scare trip on me again? Bob, I'm just telling you the way it is. Turn from the pitiful things of this world, surrender to him. Jesus Christ is worth anything that you'd have to give up. If you had a billion dollars and everything in the world you'd ever want and you gave that all up for him, it'd be like giving up a, a dead straw compared to Jesus Christ. Well, we better get to hunting these agate nodules. The teacher wanted us to collect a pound. Eh, whatever. Boy, I ought to get me a firecracker and do something with it. Huh, you better look out, Joe. He might put a firecracker in your tuna sandwich. Oh, come on, Jim. I know he's nuts about fireworks, but he's not that much of a fanatic. Well, let's get to looking. Uh, meanwhile, some distance away. Grrr. <laughs> hey, Bob, what you making those weird noises for? Nah, I get so sick and tired of Jim and Joe putting those, those religious guilt trips on me. It makes me feel terrible every time for the whole rest of the day. I'm going to put a firecracker in his lunch sack. Well, that sounds like trouble to me. Leave me out of it. Uh, a couple hours later. Well, it looks like most of you are doing pretty good collecting them agate nodule. Oh, here comes Kodo. Uh, my traveler's checks bounced. What am I doing? Oh, I remember what happened. Kodo, you are in serious trouble. Your sneeze almost kill us all. You should never have entered that transport chamber with the sniffling you were doing. I'm sorry, teacher. Kodo, your sneezes have wrecked equipment, reduced the classroom to a shambles, peeled the drinking fountain clean off the wall, nailed us all to the deck at one time or another on various occasions, and now, it almost costs us our lives. And I keep hearing, I'm sorry. If you are truly sorry, you will take the appropriate action when you have the symptoms that you're gonna sneeze. Like last Wednesday, when we had that guest visitor. About the time he was introducing himself, you started sniffling. And next thing we knew, we had to peel our, our guest visitor off the front wall. Yes, I know, I'm sorry, teacher. What I don't understand, Kodo, is why didn't you get up and leave when he started sniffling? You had at least ten seconds notice. I don't know. I do know. It's called laziness. You just didn't want to bother getting up. Well, here's a warning. 
The next time one of your sneezes causes havoc in, in the classroom or anywhere else, and you've been sniffling a couple seconds or a few minutes beforehand, it's Amicron for you. Teacher, no, not Amicron. Kodo, I don't know what else to do. I've fed you nuggets, I've fed you plob cylinders, and your sneezes keep destroying and wrecking things. The next time you sneeze and it destroys something or endangers lives, it's Amicron, all six months worth. And no, your sneezes cannot destroy Amicron, so don't think along those lines. Okay, everybody come on over here and get ready to transport. I don't know if I trust that transporter after what happened earlier. Fred, the transporter isn't the problem. It was Kodo. Oh, headquarters is calling me. Yes, headquarters. This is Instructor Android 5 out in the field. Over. Instructor Android number 5. This is headquarters. Theodore Lymph Node giving you an update on Todd Chumkowski. Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell me what's up? Todd Chunkowski is in extremely critical condition. Oh, no. It is recommended that any of his friends in the class visit him at once, for he may not last the next hour. Oh, no. I'll read you loud and clear, Theodore. I'll let my classroom know about it. There are a couple here who are interested. And thank you for letting us know. You're welcome. This is headquarters out. Out here. Did you all hear that? I sure did, teacher. I didn't know he was that sick. Teacher, I thought the recovery thing put him back together right. It did, Joe, but it didn't have all of the molecules and atoms to put him together with. The result is transport sickness, which is fatal about 75% of the time. Oh, no. I'd make a dingy remark, but I don't think this is the time. You make a dingy remark now, Fred, and you're going to be eating your way through a mountain of plob cylinders. Joe, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we got to do is get back to the classroom. Everybody assemble in the transport formation. Come on, you guys, hurry up. Okay, we're going, we're going. Man, I don't know what to do. Okay. Everybody's here. Activate transporter beams. Oh, boy, I hope this works better than what it did with the cave. Sorry to have to say this, but if you want to find out what happens to the chunker, you'll have to go to episode number 40.